Well, good morning and welcome to worship here at University Lutheran Church in Clemson, South Carolina on this Reformation Sunday. Um, it was great to see all the greetings scrolling through the Facebook Live as people are gathering for worship, not in the same physical location, but certainly in that sense of the communion of saints gathered for worship well. So I've not heard, but her surgery was this past Friday, I believe. Um, so we'll have her in our prayers. Next Sunday is All Saints Sunday. And to be able to participate in that liturgy, we have votive candles that are in the narthex that if you would like one and wanna drop by the, the facility sometime this week to pick one up, you're welcome to. As part of the liturgy next Sunday, we'll have a white rose and light a candle and announce the names of those from University Lutheran who have died since last All Saints Sunday. But we're also inviting anybody to send in names of loved ones, anyone who has died that you would like to remember this All Saints Sunday. Send those names to either Pastor Josh or to me, and we will light a votive candle in their memory as part of the liturgy next Sunday. Lastly, um, I haven't yet filled out my estimate of time and talent and giving, so I invite those of you like me who have not yet done that, the link is in the weekly e-news. Um, that is so helpful for our finance committee to put together the ministry plan that we hope to accomplish next year. So the more people that respond with an estimate of giving, it's not a pledge, it's not a contract, it's based on what I believe next year will look like, which is up in the air. Um, here's what I hope to be able to contribute to God's work through University Lutheran in the coming year. And then likewise with time and talents, we don't assume that just because you enjoyed participating in something this year, you want to continue next year, nor do we want to pigeonhole anybody away from trying something new. So please join me today in filling out our estimates of giving and time and talent sheets online. Uh, if you need a printed copy, uh, we can get one to you. Now let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship as we listen to the prelude. Before continuing confession and forgiveness, um, we may have experienced a pause as I was explaining two of the prayer petitions today, and that is we'll be praying for Zoe Carlson and family upon the death of her brother, Arno Lorschbach, as well as we'll be praying for Donna Hirschberger for continued recovery following her knee surgery. Now we continue with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates, redeems, and sustains us and all of creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another.
Faithful God, have mercy on us. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your loving embrace and go our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. We keep your gift of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble, cast away our transgressions, and turn us again to life in you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God hears the cries of all who call out in need, and through his death and resurrection, Christ has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims. Your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Led by the Holy Spirit, live in freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. Amen.
Let us pray. O Lord God, you are the holy lawgiver. You are the salvation of your people. By your spirit, renew us in your covenant of love and train us to care tenderly for all our neighbors. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We'll now sing responsibly Psalm 1, led by our cantor, C.C. Parker. first reading today is from the book of Leviticus with Renee Heiliger as the lector. The first reading for today comes from the book of Leviticus chapter 19. The Lord spoke to Moses saying, speak to all the congregation of the people of Israel and say to them, you shall be holy for I your God am holy. You shall not render an unjust judgment. You shall not be partial to the poor or defer to the great. With justice you shall judge your neighbor. You shall not go around as a slanderer among your people. And you shall not profit by the blood of your neighbor. I am the Lord. You shall not hate in your heart anyone of your kin. You shall reprove your neighbor, or you will incur guilt yourself. You shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against any of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks to Renee for reading that. Uh, I'm going to grab something for the children's message. So if you want to make sure that any children that would like to watch are gathered around the, the screen here, I'll be back in just one second. <laughs> Who's this? Is it on the screen, Pastor John? It is. Okay. Great. Sorry about the mix-up on the psalm there. 
There's a lot of readings for today because it's Reformation Sunday and it's also, what, the 21st Sunday after Pentecost. And so we got a mixture of readings. Um, and so I threw Pastor John off. He said Psalm 1 and we, we sang Psalm 46. But it was a good, it's good to keep everybody on their two toes every now and then. But like I said, it's Reformation Sunday. So this is one of the Sundays out of the whole year that we remember what it might mean for us to be Lutheran. And for us, that means that we follow some of the things that Martin Luther taught, I don't know, almost 500 years ago now. And so we, we are Lutheran because we follow some of the things that Martin Luther taught and did. And one of the things that we celebrate on this day, Reformation Sunday, is when Martin Luther made a list of 95 things that he thought the church could do better. He made this whole list of all the things that he thought his church could do better to be better Christians, to be better people. And he made that list. And then after he made a list, he nailed it to the front of the church, right on the church door where everybody would have seen it. And everybody read it. And eventually they passed it out. Everybody saw all these 95 things that Martin Luther thought they could all do better. And then the church changed for good. And now the church is kind of, there's so many different kinds of churches, but everybody kind of does what they think they need to do to be better for God and for each other. Now, I don't think we should make a list of 95 things, but I thought that on this Reformation Sunday, one way that we could celebrate, besides wearing red, that's the color that we wear on Reformation Day and having red flowers, but what we could do to celebrate as you and me, is to make a list of things that we think could be better in our lives or in the world around us. So let me think about some things. You think about some things too, but I wish you were here to holler out some things to me, but let's just see. I think that the world would be better with uh, more food. Not just food for me. I am pretty hungry this morning. I forgot to eat breakfast but more food for everybody around us. Have you ever noticed somebody in the world that, that looks hungry and might not have enough food to eat? Well, I hope that one day we'll have more food or at least be better at sharing our food. Let's see, what about um, more houses? One of the things that happened this week is that the students from Clemson University have been building a house, Habitat for Humanity house, so that somebody else can live in it. Somebody that might not have enough money to buy their own house right now, but they're building this house. So I wish there were more houses because not everybody has a house to live in. Yeah, Pastor John, do you have one? More kindness. Oh, more kindness is something that somebody said. Yes, more kindness. More oh, unity. And more unity, more being together instead of trying to fight with each other all the time. Those are good things. So these are some things that we might want to see that could be better in the world and in our lives around us. Not just for ourselves, right? We have tons of things that we might want to change about our own lives. But all people could benefit, could have a better life with some of these things. And so that's one thing we can do on a Reformation Sunday, I think, to remember all these 95 things that Martin Luther wrote down on a list and nailed to the door. We can make our own list of things that we want to see be better in the world around us. And I'm not going to nail this to the, the church door. Actually, they're painting some of the church doors around here. You'll see how bright red they are next time you're around. So I won't nail this to our door uh, actually, we don't do as much of that anymore. That's how somebody made an announcement back in the day in the 1500s when Martin Luther was around doing his thing. Today, we might do something like vote. You might hear people talking about voting in the next couple of weeks, or maybe they've already voted. That's one way that we try to tell people how we want the world to change for the better. Maybe we read a bunch of books and try to learn new things that we might want the world to change for. There are so many different things that we can do, but I think we could start by making a list and then trying to figure out how we can do those things in all that we do. That's a great thing that we can do on this Reformation Sunday. Well, let's pray, and then I'll let you go back, and then I'll haul off this big thing uh, and then read a story about what Jesus says we could do to be better people in the world. But let us pray. 
Holy God, thank you for this Reformation Sunday. Thank you for Martin Luther and all the things that he did and the things that he taught us. Thank you for the encouragement and the courage to make the world a better place. Fill us up with your love and your spirit so that we can love you and love everybody around us in all that we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks, guys. This is the, the gospel for today, and it's from the gospel of Matthew. Like I said, there's a lot of different readings that we could have chosen for today, and this is actually the gospel for the, the 21st Sunday after Pentecost, not necessarily Reformation Sunday, um, but it has a lot of good things that really relate to this idea of the Reformation. And so uh, we'll read this and see what it has to say for us today. This is from the gospel of Matthew, uh, chapter 22, verses 34 to 46. When the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? And Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment, and a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them this question. What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? They said to him, the son of David. He said to them, how is it then that David by the spirit calls him Lord? Saying, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If David thus calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one was able to give him an answer, nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions to test him. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I always wonder how best to celebrate Reformation Sunday personally. There are these holidays in the church year that we celebrate in certain ways during worship together. We light candles during silent night on Christmas Eve. We sing these triumphant hymns about resurrection on Easter. But then we go home and we celebrate those days in our own ways too, with our own traditions, maybe with a special meal or time with the people that we love the most. So for Reformation Sunday, after we sing A Mighty Fortress and dress ourselves in the worship space in red, I ask myself, what should I do to make this day special? Should I practice nailing things on the front door of the church or of my house? I could use the practice. I'm not very good with a hammer. <laughs> Or should I dress up like Martin Luther while I run errands and go to the store? Or should I drink a glass of beer like Martin Luther was apt to do? All of those things do sound fun, and I think that the idea that I had for the children's sermon is one of the most meaningful ways, though, to commemorate Reformation Sunday. To sit down with a pen and paper and to think about all the things that we want to see in this world and in our lives. Ways that we can commit to making important changes. Martin Luther wrote down 95 theses for the church to consider. And 95 is a pretty lofty number. <laughs> but can you come up with 10 things to make the world a better place? 10 things that you think God would like to see us work towards. Holidays, after all, aren't just about remembering, especially the holidays that we reserve in the church Holidays are not only about remembering the moments in the past, but wondering what those moments might mean for us today and tomorrow. The joy and the peace of Christmas, the miracle and the hope of Easter, the repentance, the learning, the growth of Reformation Sunday. Martin Luther's goal was not to have this church that was one day finally reformed, 
but to encourage the church to be constantly reforming. For the grammar people out there, that's a shift in perspective from past tense to this present participle, something that's still happening today. The Reformation did happen. It happened a long time ago, but it is still currently happening. So make a list. Where do you see the Reformation happening today? Where does it need to happen in your life and around you? A little more than a year into my call as a campus pastor, I can't think of Reformation without thinking about a college student who's switching their majors, or at least considering it. (laughs) On a personal scale, this can be a life-changing and often unsettling experience. It can start a variety of ways, a different feelings. Maybe it's difficult to concentrate in your classes and you're not doing so well. Maybe you had a frustrating and unfulfilling summer internship somewhere. Maybe someone that you look up to told you that you'd make a great teacher and now you've lost sleep wondering if you should still go to law school. Or maybe you made a list of 10 things that you want to see in your life and in the world to celebrate Reformation Sunday, and you noticed that your current studies weren't helping to fulfill those dreams. Next thing you know, you're in this advisor's office asking them if you're crazy to start thinking about changing your major, especially at this point, (laughs) shifting the entire trajectory of your future. That is the nature of personal reformation, constantly wondering what you're meant to do, where you're meant to go, who you're meant to be. And it can be overwhelming. It might mean spending more time in school than you'd planned or that you'd hoped to. It might mean a difficult conversation with a parent who is going to be very disappointed with your decision. It might mean more uncertainty when you graduate and start looking for a job. And so I feel for those students that are struggling with their decisions about changing their majors. And I pray for them that they find some clarity along the way, that they feel some peace one day knowing that the path that they are on is a path that's filled with their God-given talents and a passion for what they hope to do. Now, there isn't anything less extraordinary for students who follow a continuous vision from beginning to end those students still have their own reforming to do once they graduate too. Should they go to graduate school? Should they stay close to home or should they go to a new city or state? How will they balance their job and a social life, time for chores at home while they're paying bills? Life is full of reformation for these students. But again, college students aren't the only demographic in the world that face difficult decisions in their lives. You likely have your own stories of reformation after a change in your job or a big move across the country. Stories about how your health has changed the way that you live your lives or how you have to live your life. Stories about broken relationships or how you've learned to love and to be loved along the way. Stories about the things that you're passionate about and the things that you'd give your life for, the people you'd give your life for. Reformation Sunday reminds us that we are constantly reforming, that we are constantly wondering and asking questions and striving to be the best that we can be. We are constantly reaching out to God and saying, what should I do, God? (laughs) Where are you calling me to be? How can I live my life in the ways that you mean for me to live? Unfortunately, the answers aren't always easy. But what we hear in that passage from Jesus here does give us something firm to hold on to. This firm foundation, something that we'll sing about in just a bit at the end of the service today. While we're lost, wondering how to be the best humans that we can be, Jesus says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. So what is God calling me to do, calling you to do? Love God and love your neighbors. Something big just happened and now my life has changed forever. What should I do? Love God and love your neighbors. Yesterday was a terrible day and today I'm having trouble getting out of bed. What am I doing with my life? Love God and love your neighbors. 
I want to change my major, but what does that mean for the rest of my college career and life after that? Love God and love your neighbor. It's not an answer to every question that we'll ever have, but this is a perfect passage to read on Reformation Sunday. While we're sitting down and making a list of all the things that we want to see change in our lives and in the world, we have to measure up all of those things on our list against Jesus' greatest commandments. Love God and love your neighbor. Today is one of the days in the church year that we wear red. We adorn the worship space with red cloth and red flowers. There are only a few days in the year that we do that. The other times during the church year might be on Pentecost when we celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit, and we also wear red when we celebrate the ordination of rostered leaders. It would seem, then, that red is an appropriate color for reformation, because when we are in a period of personal reformation in our lives, we must listen and look for the presence of the Holy Spirit. Maybe it doesn't whoosh down from the sky like a dove or show up like flames of fire around us like it did on that first Pentecost. But the Holy Spirit is moving around us and it's moving in us to encourage us towards this life of loving God and loving everyone around us. Will you fulfill your role and responsibilities as this vocation? Insert any vocation here. That's the kind of question that we ask on an ordination service. And the person replies, yes, I will. And I ask God to help and guide me. Again, these are the kinds of things that we celebrate and we question and we sit with when we have personal reformations in our lives. So surrounded by this festive color of red, we are asked to think about what the Reformation means for us today. What does it mean for our faith? What does it mean for our huge church body, the ELCA? What does it mean for our congregation? What does it mean for you and me in our everyday lives? What does it mean for you today and tomorrow? And we might not have all the answers right now, but I do have my pen and my pad here, and I'm ready to make a list. Amen. Well, uh, speaking of reformation and and college students and people who are always trying to figure out where God is calling them to be. Um, One of the things that we're blessed with here at University Lutheran is this campus ministry and a time to walk with college students during their lives and to support them in any ways that we can. Uh, We're blessed by a lot of support from this congregation, from alumni all over, uh, from churches all over, uh, from friends and parents of this ministry all over the country and Uh, We are also blessed that several alumni give some money to LCM or this campus ministry in order for us to give it out as an award or a scholarship each year. And so this alumni scholarship goes to somebody in the group who applies, first of all, (laughs) and then also has a, a heart to serve others or is very involved in this ministry and just wants to continue to figure out what faith has to do with their lives and Um, how they can continue to grow in their faith along the way. Uh, Things that this ministry is here for, you know. Um, So this year, the alumni scholarship, I am pleased to announce that it goes to Amanda Taylor, who would be horrified if I had a picture of her in front of, you know, however many hundreds of people are watching. Uh, She couldn't be with us here today, but there is this picture of Amanda. This is who she is. Um, Amanda Taylor is uh, hoping to graduate next December, so December 21. Her uh, major is Parks, Recreation, and Tourism Management with a specialty of, uh, let me look here, Parks and Conservation Areas Management. Um, One thing I love about Amanda is that she loves nature. She loves animals, all kinds of animals. I hope that one day she'll dog sit for me because she's great for that. Um, And another thing I love about Amanda is that she's got such a welcoming spirit. Uh, She's always quick to go to new people that come into our group for the first time or the second time. Uh, and to make them feel at home, to go to them and not wait for them to come to her. I think that's a great thing, and I always tell Amanda, please, will you go greet this person, because I, I know that they'll be in safe hands. Uh, just She's got a big heart for all that she does. So we're pleased to, to award Amanda this alumni scholarship this year, 
um, these two semesters. And we are more grateful to just have her as a part of this community. So thanks to Amanda and thanks to all the alumni out there um, who support this cause. <laughs> We'll now continue with professing our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our prayers of intercession will now be led by Renee. In your love, you tenderly care for your children and nurse them to health. Bring relief to all those who need healing, hope, or restoration this day, including Freddie, Mary, George, Donna, Randy, Larry, Rosalind, Gail, Pat, Tony, Joyce, Cheryl, Faye, Bobby, Richard, John, Julie, Bill, Sue, Greg, Larry and Mindy, Brian and Victoria and family, Christopher, and those we now name, either silently or aloud. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. In your love, you promise to be with us always. Bring your comforting presence to all who minister in hospitals, hospice houses, assisted living, and other communities, including Kathy, Donnie, Jen, Sherry, Leslie, Molly, Cindy, Jennifer, Tiffany, KD, Beth, Hannah, Lee, Lawson, John, Mike, Smith, Joseph, Julie, Bill, Stephanie, as they care for the sick and the dying. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Here other intercessions may be offered either silently or aloud. O 
We pray for our neighbors throughout this country, those who still are at risk for wildfires in Colorado and throughout the West, those who are continuing to try to gather the lives together following hurricanes in the Gulf, and for the many, many other challenges facing our neighbors. Help us, Lord, to see one another as you see each of us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In your love, we remember those who were dear to us and now rest in you, including Zoe Carlson's brother, Arno Lorschbau. We give thanks for Martin Luther and all who seek to reform and renew your church. Give us courage to live out your gospel, revealing your love until all our days on earth have ended. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Listen as we call on you, O God, and unfold in your loving arms all for whom we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always and also with you. Let us share Christ's peace with one another. pray. Holy God, breath of life and fire of love, with a mighty wind you brought creation into being and by a pillar of fire you led your people into freedom. We praise you for the gift of your son who poured out your spirit on his disciples of every race and every nation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and the sending of the holy and life-giving Spirit, we await his coming again to renew the face of the earth. Send now your Holy Spirit upon us and upon this meal. Anoint us with your gifts of faith, hope, and love, that with thankful hearts we may be witnesses to your Son. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. As we share in this meal of Holy Communion, as you offer these elements to others or if you're receiving them yourself, uh, to offer them the name or with this, the statement, the body of Christ given for you or the body of Christ broken for you, and then the blood of Christ shed for you. This is God's meal, and all are welcome to participate. <laughs>
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. We give you thanks, gracious God, that you have once again fed us with the food beyond compare, the body and blood of Christ. Lead us from this place, nourished and forgiven, into your beloved vineyard to wipe away the tears of all who hunger and thirst, guided by the example of the same Jesus Christ and led by the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Mother in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you and lead you into the way of truth and life. Amen. Go in peace, remember the poor. Thanks be to God. <laughs>